But I wanted to tell a story about conditioning, about brainwashing here briefly. Uh, Chris Matthews called about a month ago and said, I want to come down and interview you in person. Then he had some family issue, and uh, he's doing a town hall tomorrow in Houston, so he didn't come here personally. You know I don't like Chris Matthews and took over a show in Denver with Bullhorn uh, at the DNC in 2008. That's the extra in the Obama deception, But the, if you want to see it. But the point is, is that so he sent uh, Kate, very nice lady. She is the director because it's not for his his hardball show. It's three times a year. He makes a documentary. He made the Kennedy special that they aired more than 20 times. So this is a special they're going to air over and over again about the tea parties. And she's in here in my studio. And, you know, I lease this building. It's mine. Uh, you know, several of my staff have concealed carries. Uh you don't have to have a concealed carry in, in your own business if it's the policy to have a firearm. And we don't have armed guards here. We get death threats occasionally. If somebody comes in here and uh, and uh, tries something with me or my staff, I will defend myself. And that was so radical to her because she looked under the counter here and saw a firearm. And it was near the end of the interview, right before I went live. And she would been she been acting totally normal the whole time, and suddenly she sort of looked like she was about to cry, and she went <gasps> and, and and looked completely frightened. And I was like, "What's wrong?" She says, "Is that a gun? Is that a gun?" And I said, uh, "Yes, it is." Um, you know, I have a little pistol safe under here, but but you know, when we're live and when I'm here, it's my job to protect, and it's you know, it's right here. It's not going to come out like a snake and bite you. And, and she was literally in tears, and she, and she kind of ran out of the room after the interview and was breathing heavy and afraid. Talk about pre-programming. Talk about intense psychological brainwashing. And I said, if you see a cop with a gun, though, you don't feel scared. And she went, oh. See, why does she not feel scared? See, when I see a cop with a gun, if the government wasn't becoming a tyranny, I would feel good. But more and more when I see SWAT teams and helicopters and surveillance, I feel bad. When I see a citizen with a gun, occasionally still a rifle and a gun rack in the countryside, I, I go, man, America isn't dead yet. I mean, just 10 years ago, half the people in the town I live had guns in their gun rack. Now the cops pull you over and try to arrest you, even though there's no law against it. People come in your house, carpet cleaners, you name it. They see a gun rack. They call the police thinking guns are illegal. They've created the perception that guns in the hands of citizens are some deadly, horrible thing. And I've seen this before. But, I mean, you talk about brainwashing. This was it. A nice lady. And, and can you imagine her living in New York? Can you imagine her living in D.C.? Can you imagine other women where they're disarmed? And you hear their 911 calls where they're waiting 10, 15, 20 minutes. He's breaking in. He's got a knife. Ah, please. In fact, pull up 911 call of woman being killed. Let's pull up a few of those. I mean, there's hundreds of them. And, and just hear them begging and screaming. I mean, their daddies didn't even train them to grab a butcher knife. Or a baseball bat. I mean, what daddy doesn't take his girls out once they're five years old and teach them how to use a bow and arrow and then a BB gun and then a little shotgun to show them the power, and then you lock them up, but you teach them safety. I mean, my little five-year-old daughter with a BB gun can, you know, can shoot an apple at uh, 15 feet away. She was shooting them yesterday in my backyard. And by the time she's 10, she's going to be able to you know, really shoot good with a shotgun and a 22. My son's becoming a good shot. And I couldn't imagine sending my daughters out into the world, sending my son out. I mean, parents don't teach their sons or their daughters to fight back. In these public schools, they teach you if somebody's beating you up, try to call 911 or curl up in a ball. I mean, let me tell you, 30 years ago, uh, you know, when I was five, six years old, I mean, my dad taught me don't start fights, but finish them. And I remember I started coming home beat up when I was like 10, 11, 12, and He'd say, well, I don't care if there's four or five of them. You need to fight back. And, and I learned how to fight back. I mean, we've lost our fighting spirit. And I see articles every week in England where somebody will break in a woman's house. I saw one last week. And they'll brandish a knife, and they come and arrest them. Or a crook falls through a skylight. They sue you. Or one guy had been robbed, famous case, three times and beaten up. He, he had his grandfather's shotgun hidden. He's an old man himself shot the guy with buckshot as he ran out of the house. He was trying to rape his wife. A bunch of other stuff was going on. 
I'm, well, there have been another case where they're trying to rape the wife. What was the case with uh, one of the Beatles? He died of cancer a few years ago. Yeah, George Harrison. Yeah, that was the case. The guy's on his wife, attacking him, and 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 he uh, his wife he he's chanting Hare Krishna like a ghost dance, like that'll stop it. And, and his wife breaks the vase over the guy's head, and then she got in trouble. And I see cases where a guy will be attacking, stabbing. And someone pushes them out a window and they go to prison for it. See, the government is run by criminals. And when the government runs things and they're criminals, they don't want you to think you can defend yourself. They don't want you to have that instinct that it's normal and natural. You're supposed to call the government, call the government for aid. Look at the Koreans uh, during the L.A. riots. They were the only ones that didn't get their neighborhoods burned down because they stood there with firearms. Look at every time in the U.S. now when, when somebody breaks in somebody's house and somebody kills them, the media says, oh, they need to arrest this guy. He shot the guy in his house at night. Well, what are you supposed to do? There's a reason Texas has a crime rate on average three times lower than Chicago or New York. Because in Chicago and New York, people have five, six, seven locks on their doors. They're scared to defend themselves with a knife. I mean, you don't have a lot of breaking and entering and... and, and uh, Home invasions when people are at home in Texas and Vermont and Arizona and places because you break in somebody's house in Texas or somebody's business, they're just going to kill you. And I'm so proud there's still some red-blooded strength left to where literally somebody sees a gun over here underneath the counter and goes, He's, I, to, I mean, literally, oh, I can't describe it. It was, she was like, this I got tears in her eyes. And I thought I was making her cry with what I was saying. I was like, well, I know I'm a good speaker, but I didn't know I was that good a speaker. She's like, he's that tough. Is that a god? She was, ah. and then she was during the last few, I only have a few questions left. She was like, let me ask you about this. And it, as if it was going to like jump out and attack her. I mean, what have people turned into in this country? Cars kill conservatively 10 to 14 times. It fluctuates 12, 13, 14 times, 10 times every year. Uh, but at least 10 times what guns do. More people drown in their bathtubs. So you can get up in your bathtub, slip, boom, into the bathtub. You can drown in your pool, drown in your lake, then die from guns. I saw a statistic. It isn't this way every year, but one year. What was it? Back in 1999, there were more deaths in high school football and other sports accidents than in all school shootings. I remember it was the Columbine year. It was 99. And they said, yeah, okay. This year, 16 people, 13 at Columbine, and three others died in school shootings. And it was something like 27, 28. That, Google that. More people die in high school sporting accidents than from guns. You'll see mainstream news. I, but I want to pull it up and get the exact numbers. But I want to say like 20-something died that year. It was only 16 died from guns. I mean, you get in a car, folks, and drive 75 miles an hour in between giant 18-wheelers. All of us have driven by fatality accidents. I don't know. I mean, if you didn't notice you did, you did. Everybody's, I drive by fatality accidents every year. I was driving down to the coast with my kids a few years ago and literally saw smashed bodies and blood all over the embankment with a couple wrecked cars uh, because the police had just gotten there and it was traffic. And I, and I drove by and just saw blood and, 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 and guts on the wall. I mean, when that woman walks outside, does she see a car and go, ah, 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 ah. I mean, when she sees a lightning storm 10 miles away that kills more people than guns every year, does she, ah, lightning, ah. no, she's been artificially conditioned to be just completely scared of a firearm in a slave's hand. She sees it in an enforcer's hand. She gets all warm inside. Oh, I love the state. I love Big Brother. I love government. Oh, it's so good. Oh.